Hi, everyone. Thank you for joining us today for the Lockout, the Weather, and RF Weatherproofing webinar presented by CTI Connect and Gamma Electronics. My name is Lamar Gibbs. I'm the Marketing Coordinator at Convergence Technologies, and I'll be the moderator for today's event. Uh, for, for those of you who aren't familiar yet with CTI Connect, we are a premier distributor of fixed wireless equipment, and we have a couple central fulfillment centers across the U.S. and a wealth of knowledge and in-house expertise. Um, during this webinar, we would love to hear from you today, so feel free to ask questions and share comments. Um, if you look on your screen, there is a, a question and answer panel at the bottom of your Zoom player, so feel free to fill, out, um, fill it out with any questions that you may have, and we'll get those answered. If not, during the presentation, we'll definitely have an answer Q&A session at the end of the presentation. Um, today's presenter it, today's presenter is uh, Cameron Lanier. He's the Director of Marketing and Media Communications at Gamma Electronics. And also joining Cameron is Lisa Schleg. Uh, she's the WISPA Account Manager at Gamma Electronics. So without further ado, let's get this webinar rolling. I'm going to hand it off, hand it right over to uh, Cameron. You ready, Cameron? Awesome. Thank you, Lamar. Um, well, um, thank you everyone for joining us today. We're excited to do this presentation, um, do this webinar. Weatherproofing is, we love it. So we love talking about it and we're excited. So we'll jump right in. Oh, let me make sure I can dive right in. All right. So as Lamar pointed out, we are Gamma Electronics. We were founded in 2006. I'm Cameron Lanier. I'm the director of marketing here. Um, with me is Lisa Schleg, who is our WISP account manager. So she kind of handles all things WISP related and knowing that we're working with CTI Connect today, um, we know a lot of you might be WISPs or working with WISPs. And so um, she might be a great point of contact. Um, you wanna say hi, Lisa? Hello everybody, thanks for joining and I hope everybody learns a little something today. So um, I can't see the screen very well that might, you might have questions on, but um, please feel free to chime in if you do have questions. We want to get to those. Um, I will stop periodically to ask questions or ask if there are questions as well. Um, but yeah, I'm very cool with this being more interactive than just me talking, although I know it's going to be me primarily talking, but we'd love to get to your questions. So real quick, <clears throat> We are, like I said, Gamma Electronics. We're based out of Pomona, California. And if you don't know where that is, we're about an hour outside of Los Angeles. Um, and Los, you know, if you're not familiar here in California, we measure distance by time. So our driving time specifically. So an hour outside of Los Angeles can be very different depending on the time of day. Um, we are, we like to say that we're, we were born from the world of aero defense. And essentially what that means, and this is just to give you a quick little introduction to our company if you don't already know, we specialized begin, or at the beginning at least in heat shrink. And we did work with companies like Bell Helicopter, Boeing, Lockheed Martin, and we continue to do so. Um, but ironically, although we started in heat shrink, we actually today are probably better known as the cold shrink guys. Um, we've gone to trade shows and literally people have said, you're the trade show or you're the culture Coffee. guys. So, um, so even though we started with heat shrink, we're now kind of better known as cold shrink and more specifically, not just cold shrink, we're kind of known as the weatherproofing guys and we're totally cool with this title. Uh, we'll run with it. And so we have uh, a number of products to address weatherproofing. Um, and really our goal with weatherproofing is to save you time and money. And that is, honestly, we want to create killer products that just make your life easy. So with that said, today, what we thought would be helpful in talking about weatherproofing is to really talk about the mindset of the carriers. And when I say carriers, I'm referring to AT&T, Verizon, T-Mobile. We work with these companies, um, and we'll get into that in a little bit. But we want to talk about the, their mindset on weatherproofing, because this really tells a lot about how we have approached weatherproofing, about how a number of companies approach RF weatherproofing, and <clears throat> really um, what they are looking for and how it's influenced the market. So with that said, I wanna talk a little bit about our, our relationship specifically with AT&T. So back in 2014, AT&T approached us about cold shrink. 
like I said, we were making heat shrink. We we're very well known for it. And they said to us, hey, we would like a better version of cold shrink if you can make that happen. And so if you're not familiar with cold shrink, cold shrink is a very cool product. Unlike, it's very similar to heat shrink in that it starts at one size and it shrinks down to another. The difference is it does it without the use of heat. So here you can kind of see there's this perforated rip cord in the middle of this cold shrink. And really what you do here is you pull this rip cord and as you pull the rip cord, it just automatically shrinks down. It's kind of like a rubber band that's been pre-expanded and it's ready to shrink. And once you pull that rip cord out, it becomes something smaller like this. And this is a before and after of the same version of cold shrink. And like I said, it requires no heat and it also requires no adhesive there, or it has no adhesive, I should say. So no glue and it's a very cool product, no pun intended. And um, AT&T was very, very interested in cold shrink. They came, like I said, they came to us. They wanted us to help develop a better version of it. And the reason for that was the models they were using, which were the CXS models, were not watertight. And so they were really looking at us saying, okay, we'd we like the idea of this product, but what, how can we improve it? And to make a long story very, very short, we came out with silicone cold shrink. And silicone cold shrink, essentially solved a lot of the problems that they were having. So with that said, we have, what are, let me clarify what some of the differences between the old version of cold shrink were versus the new one. So silicone and EPDM is what the material was that was being used for the older version of cold shrink. And this is still a great product. EPDM can be used in a number of situations. And that is what the CEX, CXS models were and I believe are made of is EPDM. And EPDM, it has a pretty awesome temperature range. It can go down to negative 40 up to 130 Celsius. But you can just see here, silicone, it's vastly vastly better. I mean, Spice just, good. yeah, it's just the range on that is pretty incredible. So that's one of the advantages of silicone versus EPDM. But really the bigger issue, the big reason that they wanted um, to improve upon EPDM was the shrink ratio. And this little GIF or GIF, depending on how you want to say it, is uh, kind of a great explainer here. You can see if this outer circle is where the cold shrink starts, the EPDM will shrink down to about three to one. So it starts three times larger and goes down to this size. Silicone does five to one in shrink ratio. So the difference is significant. I mean, it doesn't maybe look like it here, but if you're trying to get this cold shrink down around a cable, well, that five to one versus a three to one becomes very significant. Tighter the seal. Yeah, it creates a tighter seal. So really silicone versus EPDM it's very significant on the shrink ratio side, plus you get the benefit of temperature. And that's exactly the reason that at t was very interested in cold shrink. It's very easy to install and all those things. And you can see this was the problem they were having with the EPDM. So here's the EPDM cold shrink. And you can see they include with it a foam strip. And the foam strip was literally meant to place here to kind of make the difference up so that if the cold shrink didn't shrink far enough, you had that foam strip in the way to kind of help it grab a little tighter. The problem there is the foam strip, the foam strip, well, it's not rubber, it's not very weather protecting, you're not getting a great seal, it's not something I would want to rely on as a great source of weatherproofing. So now these products are both in the market and we sell both, for example. We sell far more of the silicone than we do the EPDM. But sometimes we've had guys come to us and say, well, how do I know which one's the silicone, which one's the EPDM? And so what we kind of started telling people is the silicone is just shiny and glossy if we want to use like Home Depot paint terms. And the EPDM is a flat or a matte. And you can see the shine here on the silicone. And also our part number, SDL, the S is for silicone. So um, yeah, so silicone versus EPDM. And here's what's pretty awesome about cold shrink is it installs insanely fast. And I want to, this is a very short video. Some of you may have seen it, but uh, yeah, I'll just let the video do, talk on my behalf.
and that's it. So if you miss that, I'm going to play it one more time, but the sil that is silicone cold shrink being installed. We did not doctor this video. It is not edited. That is the actual install time. So here you go one more time. And there it is. So really cool product installs insanely fast, highly temperature resistant. Oh, let me, there we go. And very, very um, awesome product. So this has been a big hit for us. In 2015, AT&T approved it. They have very, very heavily been using it since that time. And we continue our relationship with AT&T. And if some of you are familiar with FirstNet, FirstNet is a network that AT&T is building on behalf of the government and it's being built specifically for first responders. It is being used on those, um, on all those towers, on all those builds. So we're really proud of that. That's kind of a cool project to be part of. Um, any questions so far before I go any further? Maybe one Q&A here. Yep, I have a, a question here. There's a question here from um, from Ron. Uh, how about the uh, how about removal for something like um, an antenna swap? Yeah, that's the thing. Is AT and T um, they really use it as a um, set it and forget it option? Now later on, we're going to get into other options, other weatherproofing options that we have created to address that exact issue. Um, so yeah, we understand the problem and, but it is meant to be a more permanent option and that's why we developed other products as well. But, but the cold shrink itself, if you do need to get back into swap, yes. it can be removed and it another can. piece of cold shrink can be applied. Absolutely. And that's a great point because, uh, for example, we know if you're using tape and butyl or heat shrink or one of those options, because there's no adhesive in cold shrink, it's far easier to remove. And clean and much cleaner you can probably get it off with you know assuming you're yeah it's pretty easy to cut off of. it leaves the cable clean it leaves the, connector the cable clean. yeah no exactly so it's a pretty um, awesome product all around um, but it is meant to be a more permanent option okay so sorry another question that appears could you do a courtesy wrap um, you could, I don't know if it's going to make that big a difference. Um, so yeah, you could, and you might want to do a courtesy wrap just to help protect the cable a little more. Um, but, and I, our, our cables already come with heat shrink. Yeah. And most, right. And if you're worried about nicking the cable, that's a fair point. Um, I'm trying to figure out how much I can say here, but let me just say we're working on solutions for that currently. And we will have news on that pretty shortly. So it involves removal too. It it involves removal. <laughs> so um, that's all I can really say about it right now. But yes, we are trying to address that exact issue, Ron. So yeah. Any other questions there before I move on? All right, I'm gonna move on. Oh, one one more pop. One more. One more. All right. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, Cat5 is not as forgiving. And the problem, too, is um, even though silicone cold shrink is amazing and it goes down to incredibly small sizes, we don't always recommend it being used on Cat5 um, because Cat5 is so small. Now, there are some versions of Cat5 that can do it. And, yeah, if you're using it on Cat5, you might want to do a courtesy wrap or do something just to protect the cable. But um, cold shrink, like I said, versus something like heat shrink or tape and butyl where you have to worry about adhesive, it's still going to be far easier to remove than those other options. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, using that larger bulked out cat five, I, yeah, totally understand. Um, I should also say that most of our stuff, although we want to address the WISP market, most of our stuff started at least with addressing the telecom market. And so we started there and we have created more solutions as we've gone along for the WISP market. The Cat5 is very difficult to weather protect, but, um, but yeah, we try to create solutions there whenever we can. Okay, so I'm going to move forward here because I really want to get <coughs> to the heart of this conversation. 
Um, so I'm going to hold off. Okay, let me get to this real quick. I'll take this question, then we're going to move forward. But from Scott, obviously, it's much simpler to install versus butyl and tape. Any kind of study with test proving that this is equivalent or more superior than butyl and tape. Absolutely. Well, I can tell you exactly what AT&T and others have told us. <laughs> so let me dive into that right now. So um, yes, to answer your question, Scott, yes, there are. Now, I will be cl uh, very uh, transparent and say that they have not always shared the exact data with us. But um, I will share some information that we have just recently have sh had shared with us. Um, so let me look at, let's dive into why did at and want cold shrink? Because this is going to answer a lot of the heart of the questions you guys are getting to. So at and obviously wanted cold shrink because they could have looked at tape and butyl. They could have looked at other options. They wanted something first and foremost that obviously delivers results. The EPDM was a good example of something that maybe wasn't delivering the results that they wanted. In fact, we know it wasn't, and that's why they asked for a new version. So they were looking for those results. So specifically, why cold shrink versus those other options? And specifically, we hear a lot about tape and butyl. We still talk to people, and you guys might be some of them, who say they think tape and butyl is the best option out there. They know it's more difficult to install and uninstall, all those things, but they still view it as the best weatherproofing option. So we kind of went to AT&T and others and asked those, these questions. Why cold shrink versus other options? We want to understand what we're looking at. And so one of the things that was brought up is, is it, or we thought, I should say, is installation time. Is this about installation time? Because certainly, as you just saw in the video, it's insanely faster than something like tape and butyl. And so it really does take less than a minute to install. Now, again, transparency, there are some models of cold shrink that will not install as quickly as the one you saw in the video. But even larger, longer versions of cold shrink will usually install Less than a minute. In less than a minute. I mean, a minute tops, um, unless there's just some unforeseen circumstance. So we thought this was a huge selling point. I mean, we talked to people and they said the typical telecom tower has about 50 cables. So when you are installing a new, brand new tower in the telecom world, 50 cable, 100 connections, okay, that's a lot of weatherproofing to do. So that, if we assume cold shrink takes a minute, which it usually won't, we're talking 100 minutes. All right, so an hour and 40 minutes total. Now, granted, if you are moving around and doing all things, maybe a couple of hours, but even that's on the longer side. Compare that to tape and butyl, okay? So tape and butyl is insane, right? We're talking 500 minutes, and that's on the optimistic side. Now, you guys all know this. Right? If you've used tape and butyl, you probably are very well aware of this. But you're talking a couple hours of work versus a full day's worth of work. And five minutes each, on, by the way, on tape and butyl is, again, on the optimistic side. Most guys tell us five to ten minutes. Some guys have told us up to 15 depending minutes. Depending on the connection. Depending on connection and all those types of things. So, yeah, we, are, we thought when we were creating silicone cold shrink that we were just in creating such a faster option that that was one of the main reasons at and would be interested in it. So installation time, is that the reason? No, at and told us that is not the primary reason for choosing cold shrink. Similarly, we thought, okay, maybe this is about accessibility. And you guys are probably very familiar with this. Um, there's very little space sometimes between your connections. I mean, on this radio, we're talking less than an inch. And when you're putting tape and butyl or whatever in there, it becomes very, very tight. And so we thought that's got to be one of the main reasons. They like it, again, not the primary reason. Lastly, this is one that they brought up to us was installer quality control. And this was an interesting point that we actually didn't really think about right off the bat, but they told us, you know, all of our installers have different levels of experience. And so the new guy versus the guy who's done it for 30 years, well, we're going to get different different qualities from their install and cold shrink kind of helped remove that problem for them and so they really really liked the idea of this but even that even ensuring a better quality of your install was not the primary reason for AT&T choosing cold shrink and so really it sounds kind of naive but we were thinking most of the reasons that they were choosing cold shrink were about the initial install but really what it boiled down to for them was maintenance. Everything for them 
is about maintenance. And it makes sense if you think about it because they can control the initial cost. They can say, when we put in a tower, here is the cost of putting in a tower. Here's what I'm gonna pay for weatherproofing. Here's what I'm gonna pay for my installers, et cetera, et cetera. But maintenance visits is harder to predict and maintenance visits very quickly add up to time and money that they frankly don't wanna spend. Now they understand maintenance is a part of the game. That's just gonna happen. But maintenance, maintenance, maintenance is the reason. Because quite frankly, the more you're spending on maintenance, the more you're losing money on your bottom line. And so it was a little surprising to us. I mean, it makes sense. They want the product to last. They want all those things. But maintenance is the primary thing that they are concerned about when it comes to their weatherproofing. And so that brought up the question, what is the number one reason for maintenance costs? And you probably already know, you've probably already experienced it, it's bad weatherproofing. And this was told to us directly by telecom Tiger Teams. And if you're not familiar with Tiger Teams, they are the maintenance and repair teams who are sent by the telecom companies to go repair the towers. And though we talk to these guys all the time. And Tiger Teams, they tell us repeatedly that they just wish cold shrink or a similar product was used from the get-go because it would reduce maintenance costs. We had a guy in Michigan who was, runs his own Tiger team and he told us recently, he felt that if they were using our cold shrink, it would have probably easily reduced by a minimum of 20% their maintenance costs. Okay, and so the, this brings up the question, well, what's wrong with the weatherproofing that's being used? that's causing them to have to go and constantly maintain their, their towers. Well, this is an oversimplification, but it either just doesn't work or it doesn't last. Okay, and let me explain that because like I said, it is an oversimplification. Well, the EPDM is a good example of something not working as well or as it was intended. So for example, the EPDM had shrink ratio issues. It doesn't shrink down far enough. You have to put the foam in there. So yeah, it's a weatherproofing option, but it's not working as well as it should. Water's getting in the cable. You have maintenance issues. Similarly, hmm. we have tape and butyl. And I know we found a, we really put together a very glamorous video or picture of tape and butyl. And so the problem here is tape and butyl, you actually have a number of issues and one is temperature. Butyl does not have a great temperature resistance. Um, so it gets hot and it immediately starts becoming runny. It gets cold and butyl becomes brittle. So we recently talked to, um, her name is Carrie and Carrie owns her own company of Tiger Teams. They have Tiger Teams throughout the United States. And she told us that she, in their experience, the um, tape and butyl only lasts if it goes this far about a year and her reasoning for that is it gets through one cycle of temperature meaning the hot summer and the cold winter and then it's pretty much done so temperature issues are a big problem the other problem that comes with temperature are adhesive issues the adhesive um, in fact we talked to a tiger team and the same tiger team i mentioned earlier in michigan told us the problem they have is that the adhesive stops working when it gets cold mm -hmm. And as a result of the cold, your adhesive starts unraveling, the whole thing just stops working very quickly. So tape and butyl, even though it feels like it's a very solid way to wrap and protect your connection, it very, at most, you're usually looking at a year before it stops working or before you just can't guarantee the result. So silicone cold shrink really addresses these issues. All issues. And the thing that we are very proud to say about our cold shrink is we've not had any failures reported to us. And realize at and has now been using it for five years. So we have not had any reported failures and it's a very popular product. So why does at and use cold shrink? It's to reduce their maintenance. And it's not just at and it's the others, but they reduce their maintenance and they reduce their costs. And this is kind of the big point. If there's anything I want to come out of this webinar today, it's to approach, it's to, I would want everyone to start approaching weatherproofing with long-term maintenance in mind. Because if you're able to start doing that, you're gonna start realizing, okay, 
we all tend to think about the initial install costs and the initial install process and how it can be time consuming and this, that, and the other, because that's when we're up there in the tower working on it. And that's when it's most relevant to us, but it has to work and it has to work long term. And if you do those, if you have that mindset, you're going to look at it differently and you're going to get better results. So you're going to get long term savings if you get the right weatherproofing. So that kind of informed our opinion of how do we create better weatherproofing products. And our, our goal, quite frankly, <coughs> is to make weatherproofing as maintenance free as possible. And so we had a few things that we determined we have to do in order for that to happen. Obviously it has to have incredible weather protection. It has to be able to stand up to certain temperatures and be resistant to water and all of those things. Okay, that's a given but it also has to last against those things. And then we want the added benefit of it being fast and easy to install. And you can kind of see, I mean, it's probably pretty obvious how cold shrink, which was the first real weatherproofing product we developed, just checks all of those boxes. You saw the install, it's very, very quick. It obviously stands up to temperature. You saw the chart where you saw the comparison versus EPDM. And in terms of longevity, we guarantee it will last you for the lifetime of the cable. We like to set it and forget it. Yeah, and <laughs> the tagline we like to use on Cold Shrink is really it is your set it and forget it option. So if you can start approaching your weatherproofing with long-term maintenance in mind, it'll really inform your decision about weatherproofing from the get-go. And that's where this tagline that we love to use kind of came from is our weatherproofing and it's not just cold shrink and we'll talk about the other products here in a bit, but it installs in seconds and lasts a lifetime. And we're really proud because we stand by that. It really does install in a matter of seconds. Almost all of our weatherproofing does and it really will last the lifetime of the cable. Um, so with that, let me take a quick break here and see if we had any other questions before I move on. I want to start talking about other products we offer and how it addresses some of these issues, but are there any questions about what I just presented in the meantime? Okay. All right. I'm going to move forward. Okay, so we understand that Cold Shrink, although it's an incredible product, one size doesn't fit all. However, to help the cold shrink better <laughs> address all those different sizes, we did create it in different sizes. So as you can see here, we have our 716 thin cold shrink that goes down to a half inch coax, et cetera, et cetera. The type N's, the 4310's. Now specifically in the WISP market, I know we've already been asked about Cat5. We have um, a, tried to address smaller cables like the LMR195. And to help do that, we created what we call the GMR-195. And the GMR-195, because of our experience in heat shrink, what's really cool is we took an LMR-195 and then we added to it our, uh, our own version of heat shrink that is, increases the outer diameter. And it increases it pretty significantly so that we can ensure that we can get a cold shrink all the way down around it nice and tight around your connection. Getting down that small, even silicone cold shrink has its limits of how small it can shrink to. But with LMR195, with adding that piece of heat shrink on there, we were able to guarantee that it can. Um, so we didn't want to have an EPDM issue with LMR195 and we created this as a result. Now, if your Cat5 is able to get up to this size, that's great. You might be able to use this same cold shrink on it. The problem with that is that the Cat5, the I believe it's the RJ45, the way the connection goes into the unit, the radio unit or antenna, it's, it doesn't have something to always grab onto. So as a result, cold shrink may not be the best option with a Cat5 connection. We also offer cold shrink in colors. Um, we have more and more people asking us to help them color code and make their lives easier. So we started offering it red and blue and obviously black. But like I said, one size doesn't fit all. So we wanted to look at other weatherproofing options to address the other issues out there. And so obviously we have cold shrink, but we decided to roll out a few different options to help address the issues out there. And 
those are the slide lock, the weatherproof, and the magic tape. Okay, or weatherproof boot, I should say. So um, these are very popular products for us, and they've been very successful, and they do some really cool things. So they all do the things that we already talked about. Incredible weather protection, longevity. They're very fast and easy to install pretty much across the board. And a great first example of this is our slide lock. So the slide lock is a cool product because it was brought up earlier, well, what if I need to remove the cold shrink? Okay, this is the exact reason we created the slide lock. This is a removable and reusable form of weatherproofing. So right here, you can see this is, we got this um, slide lock that closes around the cable and it's got this interior silicone gel. And this, we already know the benefits of silicone. It's pretty weather resistant, temperature resistant. So we have that on the interior. And then it has a plastic exterior to kind of help protect against harsh environments, you know, all the wind, wind weather, all of those things. And what happens is you close this around your cable, you take this sliding lock or this mechanism, and you put it up and over the slide lock. Sorry, so you can see that there, up and over the slide lock and it locks it into place and holds it there. And what's really cool is you can see here as it's opened, here's a type N sitting inside. As it closes and the lock is placed, you can see the gel comes up and over okay. that connection. And it's really, really awesome. And then that gel protection, this was actually made, AT&T wanted this product. And so we made it to their specifications. And so here you can see the gel, they, this was important to them. They wanted there to be so much gel that as the slide lock closed, the gel came out the top. Ooh, yeah. They wanted to see it ooze and they wanted to see the connection is really, really well protected in there. And so we made sure there's tons of gel that protects it very well. And like I said, the biggest thing about this is that it's reusable. Now, it's only reusable a handful of times because if you want to reuse it and reuse it and reuse it, you're, the gel will eventually start breaking down over repeated use. However, if you put it on a lock, this it, or put it on a connection, I should say, and just lock it there, it can be a permanent solution easily. Um, it's just the more times you reuse it and reuse it and reuse it, that gel is going to start molding around the connection um, that you're using, using it on. So. It's reusable, we say about a handful of times, um, but yeah, it can also be a permanent solution. And to prove to you that it really does install in a matter of seconds, here's another video. And again, that was not doctored or anything, that is just how long it took to install in the rain. And that was me installing it, it was cold. <laughs> so this is an at t approved product as well. And it is heavily used in um, the telecom industry. And I see we have a question, so I'm gonna click that. Can be radios have a metal sheath about the size of an end connector that screws into the radio for weather seal that the Cat5 goes through. Yeah, okay, and, it, and if you have that, um, you might be able to use cold shrink on that. Mm -hmm. That's a fair, I'd have to see the exact radio to, to see. Um, you also have to realize that we've designed the cold shrink to be large enough or to be perfectly sized for connectors. And so you would have to make sure you're using a cold shrink size that could go over the um, sheath that you're describing as well. So, and that's very possible um, that we likely, one of our cold shrink um, will probably do that, but it was something, it'd be something we would need to look at. All right, any questions about the slide lock before I move on? We offer it in a few different sizes. Um, these, like I said, were designed specifically for AT&T, so they wanted one for the 716th DIN, they wanted one for 4310, they wanted these to go around um, half inch standard cables, um, and we also, the type N, we also created that one because we felt uh, there was a gaining interest in that. So we created one for the type N that can go down to a half inch um, coax. And that is the slide lock. It's a great product, stands up to the weather and uh, really popular, awesome product. However, let me jump into the next one. Our weatherproof boots. 
this is perhaps the one product that is gaining more and more interest, um, more so than some of the other products. They're all very popular, don't get me wrong, but a lot of guys are seeing this and it is by far just the easiest solution. <laughs> and so um, you can see some of the different connections we offer it for, but our weatherproof boots are also made of the silicone rubber. They're incredibly weather resistant, again, going back to the properties of silicone. But they have to be installed before terminating the cable. If you really want to get the best results out of the weatherproof boot, you need to have it on the cable before the connector goes on and is terminated. And if you do that, you're going to get incredible results. And obviously, the boot has to be perfectly sized to go around the connection, and it has to be sized to go around the cable. But when you do those two things, and we have a ton of variations of the boots to address those exact issues, you do those things, you're gonna get incredible results. And here is another example of the video. Of the video. So the boot is quite possibly the easiest of these products to install. It's also the easiest to uninstall. Now, the question that we often get about the boots is, okay, how weatherproof are they? It seems so easy that people look at it and go, there's no way that that really locks out water, okay? Well, let me just say that these are deceptively simple. Um, and by that, I mean, they look like an incredibly simple product, but there's actually a fair amount of technology packed in here. You can kind of see these little grooves here. These are perfectly placed to make sure that they are locking out that water and creating a suction that goes onto the cable and over the connector. And as it does that, you can kind of, you could kind of hear in the video that suction sound, that popping sound. It really does create kind of an airtight or a watertight seal. And so you can see a little bit of that here on the back end as well. Um, it's really cool because we have actually, we drop all our products in tanks of water. And that is not a joke. We drop them in tanks of water. We leave them there for usually at minimum 45 minutes. And our standard is it's got to come out of that tank with no water inside. And that is when we consider it ready for the market. And these came out with no water inside. They are pretty awesome. And what's really cool is, and it's hard to explain this without seeing it, but the as you install them, you can feel the suction of the air yeah. inside as you're installing it like and you can feel it become just airtight and you can feel it just locking out the weather as soon as you hear that pop it's yeah locked. It, it once you kind of hear that pop and everything it's the it nothing's getting in and it, it's pretty solid we also offer them in right angle solutions um, and you can see those are just a few of the variations we offer um, different connections down to different cable sizes we are continuously, and I can't say too much again, but we have new solutions on boots coming out that we're very excited about um, and will now soon. And here are just a few of the variations we offer. So you can see on the 716th DIN, we have it to all these different cable sizes and in right angles. Same with 4310 and uh, same with type N. Um, we don't necessarily have all the right angle solutions right now for type N that I'm, um, I'm, I could be wrong, but I believe that's the case right now. Um, and the reason I say that is, like I said, we're constantly adding new boots um, because they are growing in popularity. The only issue is you've got to get them on the cable ahead of time. And if you do that, you're going to have an awesome, awesome product. Also, um, our boots come kitted. Yes, and I will get there. But thank you, Lisa. Um, so the other, any questions on slide locks or boots or anything before I move on? Just make sure here. Okay. All right. So let me move on to the next thing, which is magic tape. Now, this tends to be a product that more people are familiar with. Uh, magic tape is really cool. Um, it is made from an ethylene propylene rubber, which is kind of similar to um, EPDM. And so you get a lot of the same character characteristics of EPDM. And EPDM has some pretty great um, temperature resistance. It's not as great as silicone, but it's pretty awesome. Um, there's no adhesive. Okay, so it's really, really cool because you don't have to worry about the issues you would get with butyl um, or the electrical tape or what have you. Um, 
it's a really awesome product that way. Um, and what it does is if you're familiar with self amalgamating or self fusing tape, it's essentially the same idea. Um, it is really cool stuff. It just adheres to itself. The only problem with magic tape is you can't guarantee the install results. And what I mean by that is going back to what we were talking about with AT&T is a first and foremost, the quality or the, the installer's experience can very much determine how well this gets installed. You know, the boots, the slide locks, the, the cold shrink, those are almost, you don't have to worry about them pretty much, but with magic tape, you might have to worry a little bit about the experience of the installer. How it's being wrapped. How it's being wrapped. Yeah. Now the um, other thing here is, um, well, actually, instead of me going there, let me just show you this video. This is going to explain a lot because you can see in this video how it gets installed. This video is a little different style. It's a little bit longer. It's 30 seconds as opposed to 15, but here you go. <laughs> Than tape and <laughs> yeah, so and that's the thing. It really is. It's this stuff's pretty great, and it will last. It'll go up on that tower, and because there's no adhesive, what's really great about it is you can kind of see here, like because there's no adhesive, like the adhesive is not going to start breaking down, you know, when it gets too hot or when it gets too cold. And really, you just stretch it out, and it adheres to itself, and it fuses to itself, and as a result, you can get a pretty pretty great bond out of it. And the thing that a lot of guys like is, okay, I can use, I can buy one roll of tape and use it on maybe three connections. So it's pretty cost effective as well. Like I said, the problem with it is you can't guarantee the results. It's not as some, it's not as simple as Cold Shrink or the other products where we can guarantee that. Oh. So it's pretty awesome, but not exactly, you know, I wouldn't call it as great a product as the other three. It's, it's not something I can guarantee as well as the other three. Um, any questions? Double check up here real quick. None from Ron? No. All right. I'm not seeing any. Nope, you're good. Cool. All right. So let's, real quick, let's talk about when you might want to use each. And this is probably pretty self-explanatory now that we've gone through them, but it's still very helpful. So for example, Cold shrink is the one that we tend to call the set it and forget it option. If you really don't think you're going to need to revisit that tower anytime soon, put the cold shrink on and forget about it. You're not going to worry about it. It's so tight. And what's really cool about the cold shrink is it, it shrinks down that first time, but it actually can get even a little tighter and tighter and tighter over time. That stuff just really wants to shrink. And so as a result, it just creates this really incredible weather tight seal. So, and one of the things we like to say about it too, is that you can see here on the connection, it grabs the connection so tight that your connection, it helps hold it in place and you're not gonna have to worry about vibration or anything knocking that, that connection loose. So this is really your set it and forget it option. Your, uh, the slide locks are if you wanna swap out the cable. So if you feel like, okay, I might need to swap out this cable, they, Get, get a slide lock. I mean, it's going to give you, it can be a permanent option, like I said before, but you're going to be able to pop that thing on, get it back off, and still be able to swap out your cable. The boots are if you can install this before terminating the cable. Now, the thing to remember here is, okay, if I remove the cable, you're, you're removing the boot as well. The boot's going to go with the cable. So now it is possible, let's say, it, you could technically, um, if you're going to get a new cable, if it's the exact si same size cable, and you, you could take the connection off the cable you had the boot on, swap the boot over to the other cable before you terminate it. That is very possible. Um, but it is just to make it clear, it is the option that you have it on the cable before it's terminated. And then it's an awesome solution. And then what we like to say with the magic tape is when you really don't have another option, go with the magic tape. And the reason for that is, again, you can't guarantee the results as well as you can with the others, 
But what really is handy is what we also like to say about magic tape is you could you should kind of just always have it in your bag because if you have an odd size connection, something really strange, something really different, then it's really handy to have this on hand. Um, similarly, if you have a nick in your cable or you just need to do a quick repair, have the magic tape with you. And so magic tape, I don't want to knock it too bad because it really is a great product and has a lot of uses. It's just if I personally had to choose, I would be trying to use one of the other three products before I went with magic tape. But I would always want to have the magic tape in my bag for safety purposes. So to prove or to put the cap, I guess, on this conversation about our weatherproofing, um, we created this video to show how quickly our big three, we like to call them, can be installed. And all of them can be installed under 30 seconds. Oh, not sure what happened there. And so we just, in real time, installed three different versions of weatherproofing all within 30 seconds. And all from the ground. We weren't even in the on a tower. Right. <laughs> and so, I mean, it's pretty remarkable. Um, we really have taken some of those points I talked about earlier to heart about fast and easy. It's got to last and it's got to work. And so, again, Gamma RF weatherproofing, it installs in seconds and it lasts a lifetime. Now there is a couple more things I want to address before I close things up, but do I have any questions before I move on? Double check up here. Oh, we look good. All we right, look good. good here. All right, so the last thing I want to address is that we do offer cable assemblies. And the reason I bring this up is because of certain things like the boots. Um, because we offered the boots and other products, obviously we had a lot of people come to us and say, well, can you offer, um, can you put them on the cable for us? Or can you give us cables kitted with cold shrink? Or, or they that. wanted these things. Yeah. So we essentially said, well, yeah, we're a weatherproofing company first and foremost, but sure, we can look into doing cables. And now we do. With the simplicity of one skew. Right. So for example, here are some of the cables we offer and you'll, you can see these on our website as well. But we have um, our low PIM cables. And if you're not familiar with PIM cables, they're heavily used in the telecom market and they're very needed in LTE deployment specifically. So we offer low PIM cables. And low loss cables are kind of, they're used more frequently in the WISP market. Um, and that's your LMR cables specifically. And then we also offer our low PIM cables. You can buy just the cable, not terminated. Um, you can buy those in large spools if you wanted to assemble your own cables. So those are some of the offerings we have there. But what's the whole point for us in doing cables was really to kit it with our weatherproofing. And the boots are a great example. Like this is how they should come. Um, in an ideal world, you would get your boots on the cable. And so that's one of the main reasons we started getting into cables. And you can see here, the boots go on really easily and they install, you saw how quickly they install. And one of the key advantages of us doing this is, for example, here's a cable assembly that we offer with Coltrink. And you can see that when you kit them together, you can get up to a 30% savings. So to give you an example of that, and this is an example of a low PIM cable, which because they're higher end cables, they're more expensive typically. So let's say the cable was $50. Okay, and then let's say the cold shrink on both sides of that cable, um, and in this example, we're using the largest version of our cold shrink as the example. So let's say that was $16 times two, so $32. Well, your uh, basic math, you're looking at an $82 purchase to get all of those things. So we looked at this and said, no, we can make this easier, make this better. And so we, we started kidding them together. You put your cable and cold shrink together, we bring this price down to $70 and we make it one skew, as Lisa pointed out earlier. So, so convenient. It's incredibly convenient. So instead of you going and saying, okay, I need two cold shrink and I need a cable and I need this cable and that cable and these, mm -hmm. it's all together. And so we offer not just cables with cold shrink, but we also offer cables with boots. Your choice. Um, you can, yeah, you can Costing, choose. 
cost same the same. We're and that's what's really cool about it. So you can buy a lot of our cables with weatherproofing and it really almost comes out to about the same price as if you had just bought the cable. And so why would you buy a cable when you can come to us and get a cable and weatherproofing? I mean, we really, um, it might be a little more in some cases, but point being, you're getting a lot more bang for your buck if you do this. We have phenomenal lead times. And yes, and thank you, Lisa. Yeah, we have <laughs> phenomenal lead times and we really, really try to turn these things around quickly. And previously I mentioned the GMR 195. This is one of the kits we offer. So it's again, to make sure that we can weatherproof the LMR 195. It's, you could get the cable with the heat shrink on it. It's already installed. You don't have to worry about buying an LMR 195 and trying to put your own heat shrink on it. We already made it wet that way for you. And it comes with the cold shrink that fits exactly the way it should onto it and you're done. So another one of the reasons that we decided to get into the cable market. Mm -hmm. The other thing I should address because we actually had this a lot in the WIS market is custom cables. Now these are usually low PIM cables, but you're able to come to us and say, okay, I want a standard half inch or a super flex cable. You can choose a, from a variety of connectors. And over here, you can see a few of the options we have, 716 stand, a 4310, a type N. Mm -hmm. And then you can choose the cable length. We have made cables as long as 40 feet. Um, a foot. Yeah, and then some as long as a foot, yeah. <laughs> so it, we have done all sorts of different variations. And then lastly, you can choose your weatherproofing that goes onto that cable. We've got a question, so let me look at that. Okay, cool, so if you wanna test the GMR 195, that's awesome. Awesome. And so, yeah, we can talk about that. Um, and in fact, that kind of leads me to one of my next points. So thank you, Ron. Let me close that real quick. I have Ron over here. I think Ron's going to need some samples. Okay, for sure. <laughs> so we have, uh, that kind of can, wraps up some of our cable assemblies, but let me also say in conclusion, there are a couple things I want you to be aware of. And one of those things is, if there was anything you come out of this webinar with, I want you to know bad weatherproofing is the number one reason for maintenance and you can, with some different weatherproofing choices, vastly reduce your maintenance costs. And so- You can do it right the first time. If do it right maintain. the first <laughs> time and reduce your maintenance. Make sure your weatherproof reduces, your weatherproofing reduces your maintenance and reduces your overall costs. You can really help out your bottom line by making sure you do it right the first and time. And simplify life for your installer. Yeah, <laughs> just make your installer's life easier. and. Um, we recently talked to a telecom company who told us that they are trying to get their teams to go from 10 days of installs to five days. I mean, they're literally cutting it in half and weatherproofing can vastly help improve your speeds and your times with your installers. So there's just so many advantages to it. Now, the other thing I want to point out here real quick is if you go to our website, because Ron, you've already brought up, for example, that you would like to test some of our products. This is the Gamma website. It's just gammaelectronics.net. And I'm, we took a short video here so you can go and check this out. And you can see links to some of our popular products right on the homepage. But if you go up to products and under cable protection, you'll see RF weatherproofing. If you click and go to that page, you can request samples. Okay, so here again are links to all of the information on our products. You can check all of that out. And if you scroll down on that page, there it is. Just give us some basic information and we can send you some samples. We usually uh, try to get our samples out within 24 to 48 hours. Yes, yeah, we send them out fast. Now you can request a sample on a number of our weatherproofing products. Um, we ship them out quick. And here's the thing, if we ship you samples, we want feedback. We want feedback. We yeah, want to know so how great they are. We, we want, want you to tell us. Exactly. We want to send things. it to you. We want feedback. So this is why we have you fill out the form because we want feedback. We want you to tell us what you like, if there's something you don't like, how we can improve products. And we are constantly trying to develop better, newer products. Like I said, we have a couple coming out pretty soon that I'm excited to share. Unfortunately, I can't share it right now, but um, we want feedback so that we can consistently improve. The other thing I want to share, of course, is we're very grateful that CTI has put on this event. And obviously you can please go to their website and check out, you can find us there very easily. I went and did this just this morning. If you go to their website and you go shop by brand, Gamma Electronics is right there 
at the top right. You can click on our page and boom, get a lot of the same information right there from CTI. We love working with CTI. They've been awesome. So love working you guys too. Awesome. Oh, thank you. So, um, so yeah, so there's lots of information I know I threw at you guys. Um, but we're just under an hour in presentation time here, so I think we did okay. Um, so that pretty much sums us up. We are first and foremost at this point, even though we started in Heat Shrink, we're kind of a weatherproofing company now is what we're best known for. And uh, we'd love to help you guys out. So yeah, reach out. We'll send you some samples. Yes. Reach out to CTI. Please yep. reach out to CTI. Feel free to reach out to me or to Lisa. Um, you can get... Um, I can share some of that information. We can maybe blast that out in an email or something. I apologize. I should have had a slide with that, and I don't at the moment. But um, please reach out to Lisa, um, me, or Lamar, or anyone at CTI on their team, and we can get um, samples to you. But we already did explain that process. Is there any last questions? Where's Ron? Yeah, let's open up, open up the floor. We have um, a question here from Scott. Do a lot of half-inch coax with type N connector installs. Does one of your cold shrink parts net numbers satisfy this would it be possible to get a couple samples absolutely yes yes go to that um, samples go request to our page. rf weatherproofing page request samples and also check out um i believe it's the tn90 the sdl t i believe would address that type exact in. type n with the half inch coax any other questions Any other questions? Now's the time. <laughs> Thanks, Lamar, for everything, by the way. Yeah, thank you, Lamar. Oh, no, thank you, no CTI. Problem. No problem at all. It's been great. No problem. All right. Oh, well, thank you, guys. Yeah, there, thank you so much for your time. If there's no more questions, um, we appreciate everybody who um, viewed this webinar, who, who who's participating in this webinar, we really thank you. We appreciate your support. Um, big thanks to Cameron and Lisa for your time. Uh, we'll be actually sending out a, a follow-up email um, at the end of this presentation. And what we'll do, um, Cameron and Lisa, we also I'll put the link in the email for um, any of the viewers who want to request samples. Fantastic. So that we we appreciate that. That would be wonderful. Yeah, that will be pretty easy that way. And um, I'm also following this email. We'll have a, a short thank survey that will launch directly at the end of the webinar. So if um, you viewers have time, we would really appreciate your feedback, um, filling out that survey and letting us know how well we did. And if you guys would like more webinars like this in the future, um, thank you. We appreciate it, everybody. Awesome. Thanks. Have All a right. good day, everybody. Thank you.